Hello everyone, I'm here today in Mendocino County, California with Nancy Coleman, the project manager for the Prison Monastery Program out at the Central California Women's Facility, the largest women's facility or state prison in the country. And um, Nancy has worked with uh, death row inmates, death row female inmates uh, at, at this facility and other facilities. And we really thank you for being with us here today. Also present is uh, Keith Helwig, retired Wisconsin Department of Corrections, my colleague this week who's traveled with me for the Guards to Guardians program, Unconditional Freedom program. We've been touring and giving presentations at jails and prisons. But we want to talk to you today for sure because you are in a very important role with these um, female um, inmates and uh, and I'd like you to just introduce yourself give us any educational background and then just go go with the flow just take your time and tell us about your program yeah thank you thank you um, I have been a part of the prison monastery program for about a year and a half now and my original idea was to send out invitations for people who are incarcerated on death row to join our Art of Soul Making correspondence course. So I individually, person by person, chose different facilities and individually sent out invitations. And the person who received my invitation could opt into the program. Yes, I'd like to do it or not do it. And based on that, I would send them uh, our workbook. And today, I sent out about 450 personal invitations, and we now have around over 300 incarcerated uh, people on death row who are a part of our uh, Art of Soul Making uh, correspondence course. Are they all uh, female? I'm didn't no, mean they're, they're not all female. Male and female. Male and female, yes. And so I sent um, uh, some invitations to, well, I sent to all the women on death row and then also um, to the men as well. And so I'm continuing to do that. And uh, currently we have 130 facilities that were, uh, it's not just death row, it's um, general population as well, who have received our Art of Soul Making program. And I assign pen pals I'm the, I'm the conduit between the letters coming in to the Unconditional Freedom Program. Uh, they come through our database. And so we have, a, uh, we have a safety program where uh, the, the letters are reviewed and it looks for certain keywords. And so when they come in and when they go out, it goes through a letter scan. And so, as well as me reviewing the letters as well. And, and then when I, I assign the pen pal and then they write only through our, our database. And so they have, a, the correspondent has a dashboard uh, and they, they write on it. So there's just first names only and only use uh, the unconditional <laughs> freedom uh, email or return address if it's postal mail. Keith, what do you... Can oh. I ask you how you... your criteria for choosing people that are going to be the pen pals? The um, people hear about our program, they look us up and they have a desire to contribute. And sometimes it's personal interest, like they have a family member or, or someone that they know or maybe they have, they're in some kind of personal challenge in their own life and they feel like if they give back, they will have their own healing if they do that. And then, um, yeah, so people look us up and hear about it in, in many different ways. And um, we recently had someone who, um, who just, uh, got out of uh, prison herself and needs to do community service. So she found us online and signed up to be a, a certified 
letter writer, and now we're working with herself and her parole officer on getting her volunteer hours, some of them, not all of them, for her letter writing. So and we spoke about that the other day, and just for the audience out there, this is also approved by a judge. Uh, if you're not familiar, if someone gets out of prison and they have community hours to do, the judge has to approve where they can go and, and do their community hours. And there's also the state has a form of approved locations they can go. So for this program, did it take a special meeting with the judge to get it approved? Well, we're, this is brand new, so that's in, in, in process as we speak. It so hasn't it's, happened yet, but it's, it's going forward to the judge. It's, it's, and yes, exactly. I understand in this case, the parole officer's on board and you're on board. Um, probably the state attorney, I, I, I think it has a good chance to be approved because of the next question I want to ask Captain Helwig. Uh, your security measures uh, seem pretty good about these things and, and then you only need to use a first name basis. How do you feel about the security they're using for these letters coming in, Kim? You know, I think as long as there's good screening and as long as you have such a personal investment in it, I think that's a good idea. Uh, unfortunately, both Gary and I know how manipulative incarcerated individuals can be. So having someone such as yourself there screening things and looking at things, I think it's a good program. You know, Inmates love outside contact. They love hearing from the free world. Mm -hmm. And maintaining contact with someone, even if they don't even know their last name or they don't know a lot of personal information about them, it still gives them a connection to the outside world. And I think that's a connection that they really need. Yes, so I wanted to make sure we get those two points out there. Yes. Approved by a judge, approved by the parole officer. Yes. Your security seems very tight, first name only. And you're screening it, and a database is using keywords to notify you if it looks like a problem. Yes, and we have run our protocols by the, um, the administration at certain facilities that we're working with, and they like our protocols so much, they've adapted our protocols. So yeah. we took theirs and adapted them, improved, and then added some of our own pieces and then they got to sh see that and then added, added it to their own protocol. So that's we're, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very so we're good. we're working together to mm -hmm. make it work and taking it seriously and, and then also the communication is primarily about our Art of Soul Making program, which is a program that brings not only the volunteer, letter writer, into their own process. They're studying the material as well and then sharing how their life is changing through some of these practices and principles with the incarcerated person. So there's this, um, uh, the, the study of the program is, the, is the, the reason to connect. And then of course we have our life stories and things that we can share that we try to keep in a certain um, format, you know, not too, too personal or anything mm -hmm. like that, but, but vulnerable in terms of I used one, this principle for myself, like forgiveness, for instance. If I had something that I was carrying on my heart and hadn't forgiven somebody, there's practices and principles in there where I can write about it and then find forgiveness. And then we're sharing about that with our with the pen pal, and the pen pal is looking at that themselves, and then getting some burdens off their own heart as well. And so um, that can. Uh, so we have a. That's why we call it the prison monastery because it's contemplative practices to take that time and use it well, and um, for for growth. And, to open. and are you doing this for both the male and female incarcerated? Yes. Everybody, everybody. Everybody. Yeah, it's not right. just, I know you're located at the uh, Central California Women's yes. Facility, but that doesn't mean you're not doing it for everybody. Exactly. You, you, you're going statewide. And we're going statewide and we're going um, countrywide and mm -hmm. so forth. So, yes. Very good, very good. I tell you what, um, I think that after a week here, speaking with you and, and the people involved in the Unconditional Freedom Program and the Guards of Guardians, uh, 
you know, we were sent here to talk to correctional officers, but we also talked with the incarcerated, that we were allowed by the sheriff and the uh, warden of the women's facility to go on the compounds and actually talk, which is a, a, a great privilege to be able to do that. Uh, of course, anything we say from the incarcerated people, we're allowed to use their comments in my article and in my videos, but I can't use names, obviously, which is a good thing, security. But uh, we got some good vibes out of all this, and it looks like it's going in the right direction, in my opinion. And I want to thank people like you for doing what you do, because until I got in here hands-on with you this week and the others, you don't realize how much work is involved in it. Every person from the uh, free food program for officers um, to the um, youth camp uh, garden program. I did an interview uh, with Maurice on that, uh, Mauricio on that, and interviewing you. And until you actually get out there and see what you guys are doing, right? I know from the correction officer side what's going on. I have an eye, I had an eye opening uh, this week, and I know you guys are working hard. Uh, I'm going to turn to uh, Keith now and see if he wants to. What I found <coughs> impressive is that your program not only affects the incarcerated, but it affects the staff as well. The staff had very positive things to say about it. Uh, they talked about the way that the inmates reacted when they got back to their units, the calm that, that they had as a result of the program. So staff are very appreciative of it. Uh, a lot of times staff will look at rehabilitative purposes or whatever as being secondary. Well, in a sense it is for a correctional officer, but in the overall setting of the prison, it should be foremost in helping these individuals to to maintain a level within themselves where they, they don't get in trouble again. And I think staff are realizing that as well, that you're offering them that opportunity. So thank you. And in my closing, I just want to say, uh, we always feel, um, I've always felt, and I, I, I know the captain does too, that the civilian portion of our criminal justice system in our prisons and jails is highly important. We're all important. The correctional officers on the front line, the medical nurses, the counselors, uh, people in your program, all have to work together. And if we don't work together and try to understand each other, we're not going to accomplish what we want. But what I've seen out here this week is between the sheriff's county jail and this woman's uh, facility uh, with the warden, it's happening. So thank you very much. Is there anything you want to say in closing? I, I just think it's been amazing to meet you two and to hear your perspective. To me, that was a missing piece for me uh, to hear your stories. And we, when we were, when we made the free food uh, meal together, and you were sharing your stories, that was, in a, you know, an awakening for me. Uh, we all need to know each other's part inside, and that makes makes it balanced, that everybody does matter. And so I appreciate you coming and uh, the heart that you brought to us and how much that means to everyone and the difference that it makes. So thank you. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Nancy. Thank you very much, and thank you for your uh, diligent work in not only what you're wanting to get accomplished, but for your diligent work in the safety and security process as we come from that side. And I love the way you're monitoring those letters and things coming in and out. Thank you so much for everything you do. Bye. Thank you.